what is up guys welcome back to the channel i hope each and every one of my subscribers even non-subscribers i see you right now hit that subscribe button right now and subscribe i know you want to become a part of the fam all jokes aside i hope everybody has been having a great week i know i have and today i am actually back at it with another install video today um we are going to be installing z1 motorsports hub centric spacers and my ball nose extended studs on my g35 coupe right here and i'm going to show show you guys and go through the step-by-step -step process i'm actually how to do that because i know for a couple of people it's confusing but it's actually a very quick and easy process so this is what we're going to be installing right here i have 10 millimeter hub centric spacers from z1 motorsports cool little engraving on the side there i always think that's a nice touch by them um and ball nose extended studs so basically this whole combination of parts right in front of me is what's required to fit my 19 by 11 in the front because if a lot of you haven't been following me and see my other videos the back of the wheel actually doesn't have any indentation for longer studs if i were to run the hub centric spacers that have the studs in them so basically those are out of the question and i have to use ball nose extended studs with the hub centric spacer but before we get further into this install, if you could smash that subscribe button and that like button, I would truly appreciate it. We are growing at a rapid pace right now, and I don't know what these goofballs are doing in the back. But I would truly appreciate it if you guys could do that. Let's get back into this video. Just threw on the 10 millimeter hub centric spacer with the new wheels that are going on with the Y body. I just wanted to see how close I would get to the caliper and if it clears and we are in the good. This is a 10 millimeter spacer on, no extended studs yet, which we are installing right now. All right, so when you're installing extended studs, what you really want to do is jack your car up, obviously, and get it in the air. And then you're going to want to turn your wheel the way where you can get to the bolts that are in the back of your caliper, depending on which side you're doing. So since we're doing the driver's side, we're going to turn the caliper this way so we can access the caliper bolts right here. Because these are coming off and so are the rotors. So we can bang out these old crusty possibly strip studs like look at that uh, we'll see so I ran into my first problem of this install the caliper bolts on the back of the brembos are being very very tough to get i loosened one of them but it is slowly breaking all my tools i broke this i mean they're dirt glass tools so whatever yeah this is broken what else is broken i have a ratchet over here that is broken too like this thing is done so you can see straight through that right there like what i don't understand how any of this is happening but it's really making me stressed out so hopefully i'm able to get it with the last ratchet that i have or else i'm just gonna continue this tomorrow and i'll be back All right, so after heating up the bolts and taking a crack at them with this ratchet and a breaker bar, I was able to loosen them. As you guys see, I got them pulled out and I'm just gonna drill them out right now so we can move the caliper out of the way and then finally get the rotor off. So I just got the caliper unbolted and moved out of the way and the rotor taken off. I am not going to have this sit here that long. After this clip, I'm actually going to go find something that this can rest on. Your studs are very easy accessible to get out and get the new ones in. As you can see, there's a notch here and you just line it up and then you'll be able to install the new ones very easily without having to deal with anything getting in the way going this way as you're putting them in. All right, so I basically took out all the OEM studs and now I am installing the extended ones, the ball nose extended ones. And basically this grinding it down wasn't enough. So I just took a hammer to it and I just bashed it down so that you could just align this perfectly with the notch up there. And then you could just slip your extended stud in and it goes in beautifully. That's how I've been doing it. And it worked on these two. So on to the next three. All right, guys, it is the following week and we actually ran into a problem. Um, I don't even know how this is even possible, but I'm about to show you guys. Right, so basically, the front hub that you guys see on this car did not come on this G35 at all. The previous owner or one of the previous owners actually changed the hub with maybe an aftermarket one or one from, I don't even know what car this can even come from, but it's probably aftermarket. And I did some 
actually research about these neural sizes and the stock stud on a G35 or 350Z is supposed to be a 14.3 and this is from Z1 Motorsports and I went and bought a digital caliper to actually get the reading on this, the measurements and basically this is a 14.3 and what I was running into is this 14.3 would not seat in these stud holes here at all. Like it would only get up to the neural and not even past this little ridge right here it wouldn't even go past it and i was stuck and i actually found out that these are aftermarket hubs and they do not belong here at all because this neural size that i took off the car is like a 12.5 and i don't even know how this is even on this car it doesn't make any sense to me because two millimeters shorter is a pretty big difference but let's actually get to finishing this but to solve all my issues i went up and picked up some 350z hubs so this should fix the problem I got these for 20 bucks each, about 40 bucks for the set. I got the other one over there. The seat for the stud should be way bigger and the neural size should be 14.3. I got the new hub in finally. It took me a little bit. It's just a very tight area back there working with the tools, but I managed to get it back in and everything is good now. And now for everything you've been waiting for, what this video is supposed to be about, installing the extended studs. Let's get to it. Take number two, hopefully, these extended studs fully seat themselves these times because we have the correct hub. Now let's get to installing this and showing you guys how to. So once you get your extended stud and you have everything out of your hub, you can go back to your little notch here and get it in just like that. And then what you're gonna do is, I mean, I bought some washers, you guys can too, or use your Lyle wheel stud installer tool, but I find this works a little better for me. So you just put a stack of them just like that and then you're gonna wanna go and pick up some bolts. I got these from AutoZone actually. You just gotta get the correct thread pitch and it has to be open-ended just like that. Not just like that. You're gonna wanna screw it on. Tight, just like that. So that it's straight. You gotta make sure your stud is straight at the same time because you want it to seat nicely. So you're gonna wanna get, I think this is a 19 millimeter. Yeah, it's a 19 millimeter socket. Should fit on the bolt nicely. And then you're just gonna wanna tighten. And it should fully seat it. As you can see, just from that pass through, take a look at the back right after you finish that and make sure the whole stud is seated flat around it. And it looks like this one is. So perfectly done on that one. And then on to the rest of them. All right guys, so it is the next day after I finished the install actually. Um, it got kind of dark while I was trying to do the install with you and I had some complications with the light that I was using. So it is the next day. As you can see, the G is finally dropped on the ground and the extended studs are fully installed. I am running the stock wheels still along with some Mishimoto open-ended lug nuts to accommodate the extended studs because it wouldn't fit with my regular lugs obviously. But yeah, the car is looking and feeling great. I'm pretty sure I installed everything correctly. No shaking or vibration or anything like that. As you guys saw in the video and during the install, it really isn't that hard or complicated at all. It requires basic tools and it's just very simple. It's as simple as doing brakes, I feel like. I really hope this video has helped you guys out install your extended studs. And if it has, make sure you smash that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button. I would truly appreciate it. And if you stay to the end, like always, I appreciate you so, so, so much. And comment down below what videos you guys want to see next. Peace out, guys. See you in the next one.